On the morning of the 6th of June 1944, the British 3rd Division, under the command of Major General Thomas Rennie, commenced its assault on Sword Beach as part of the invasion of Normandy. Leading a division ashore was the 1st Battalion, the South Lancashire Regiment, and the 2nd Battalion, the East Yorkshire Regiment, both of which began landing on Sword Beach at around 0720. Immediately on landing, both battalions came under withering enemy fire and sustained significant casualties, particularly from a German defensive position known as Strongpoint Cod, which was sat directly in the middle of the British landing point. Describing their assault, the war diary of the 1 South Lancashire Regiment records that First wave touched down and although met by heavy machine gun fire and mortaring made satisfactory progress. At 0745, second wave touched down, met by small arms fire, mortar and 88mm. Landing made almost on Strongpoint Cod, which are still active. B Company proceeded to deal with Strongpoint Cod. Their company commander, Major Robert Harrison, was killed immediately on landing. Lieutenant Robert Bell Walker assumed command, but was killed during attack on pillbox. Opposition eventually overcome, apart from isolated snipers. By 0810, the two assaulting battalions had secured a lodgement area astride the coastal road, from where the two East Yorkshire regiments struck out to secure a position known as Strongpoint Sol, whilst the one South Lancashire regiment advanced south to Hermanville Samur. Simultaneously, the first of the follow-up units of 3rd Division began to land on Sort Beach, including the 1st Battalion, the Suffolk Regiment, which touched down at 0825 and moved inland to the village of Colville Sir Orne. Advancing across country, the Suffolks made good progress towards their objective, and at midday on the 6th of June, their sea company had gained possession of Colville. An hour later, at around 1300, B Company was passed through, and against minimal opposition, it captured a German gun battery called Strongpoint Morris, as the battalion war diary details. This locality had already received heavy bombing by the RAF, and after only a few rounds had been fired, the garrison of about 60 Germans came out and surrendered. B Company then moved in and occupied the position. After the fall of Morris, the Suffolks turned their attention to their next objective known as Strongpoint Hillman, which was located a kilometre south of Colville and sighted on a ridgeline that overlooked Sword Beach. During the pre-invasion planning, Strongpoint Hillman had been identified as one of the strongest German positions in the region, with an extensive trench system connecting with pillboxes to brook pits, underground shelters and steel capullas, whilst minefields and barbed wire surrounded the complex. In addition, it was known that a German headquarters, later confirmed to be that of a regiment, was housed inside the strong point, thus making it a key part in the German defensive plan for the sword area. Given its importance and the depth of its fortifications, strong point Hillman was supposed to have been hit by American bombers in the early morning hours of the 6th of June. However, when the one Suffolk regiment arrived in its vicinity at midday, it was discovered that no such attack had taken place. Further, the naval officer who had been tasked with directing naval fire onto the strong point had sadly been killed during the initial landings, meaning that Hillman had virtually been untouched by the Allied preliminary bombardment on the day of the invasion. Despite this, the one Suffolks knew the position had to be secured to open the way to the city of Khan, and at around 1320, A Company, with a platoon of D Company attached, set off from Colville in the direction of the strong point. Providing fire support to the attack were the Sherman tanks of C Squadron the 13th 18th Royal Hussars, as well as elements of the 33rd and 76th Field Regiment's Royal Artillery and the mortars of the one Suffolks. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Goodwin, the commanding officer of the 1st Battalion, the Suffolk Regiment, recalls the opening phase of the attack on Hillman. The breaching platoon crawled forward through the corn. The Bangalore torpedoes were placed under the barbed wire and blown. Next, the mine clearance sheep tracking party made their three foot wide lane through the minefield and laid the white tape for the troops to follow. When these reached the inner wire, the 2nd Bangalore section came up and placed their torpedoes. This was successful and the breach was made. The 1st Assault Platoon of A Company then moved forward through the breach. Under the cover of a smoke screen, the forward platoon of A Company rushed through the gaps in the barbed wire and stormed into the enemy trenches. However, almost immediately, multiple German machine gunners opened up and the attack soon ground to a halt. A short while later, a second platoon from A Company also managed to get through the gaps, but it too failed to make any progress. 
Realising that the infantry advance had stalled, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Goodwin ordered the tanks of sea squadron to close up to the edge of the barbed wire and directly engage the enemy entrenchments. But again, this failed to silence the German resistance, and two of the Shermans were knocked out by a German anti-tank gun, which itself would be silenced soon after by British small arms fire. Lieutenant Colonel Goodwin continues, The arrival of the tanks at the outer wire did not materially improve the situation. They prevented any enemy movement across the open, but they could not penetrate the emplacements or cover our men for the enemy machine gun fire. The steel capilla, which was causing most of the trouble, was not even penetrated by several rounds of 17-pounder armor-piercing shot, though no doubt the occupants suffered from a severe headache. Accordingly, it was decided that the two platoons of A Company would be pulled out from their present location, whilst the gaps in the barbed wire and minefields would be enlarged to allow the Sherman tanks to enter and get on Hillman itself. Under covering fire, a team of Royal Engineers from 246 Field Company crawled forward through the corn, and after overcoming various difficulties, they succeeded in widening the gaps, with Lieutenant Arthur Hill, who was in command of the Engineers, later being awarded for his leadership under fire. It was necessary to clear a 40-yard lane in the perimeter minefield to enable tanks to enter the locality. Throughout the operation, he set a splendid example to all ranks, his exceptional courage and determination in this action being a major factor in its ultimate success. With the gaps now wide enough for the Shermans to pass through, a second attack on Strongpoint Hillman was launched in the late afternoon of the 6th of June. This time, C Squadron was to lead, with the infantry of A Company following up directly behind. An additional two platoons of infantry, one each from C and D companies, were also to be in support. Preceded by an artillery bombardment, the Sherman tanks departed their start line sometime after 1500 and worked their way through the gaps and into the enemy defences. Immediately behind them, the infantry came up and under the cover of the Shermans, were now able to get in and amongst the German positions, from where fierce close quarter fighting developed. Among the men involved was Private James Hunter, who stormed into one of the underground shelters and began firing into the structure with his brain gun an action that would see him not only silence the enemy position, but also become seriously wounded when he was struck by a bullet in the head. In spite of his wound, Private Hunter remained with his company for the duration of the attack, and wouldn't be evacuated to an aid post until the evening of the 6th of June, after which he would make a full recovery and be recognised with a Distinguished Conduct Medal for his heroism. Meanwhile, elsewhere on Strongpoint Hillman, the rest of A Company were clearing out the other emplacements, a task that was both draining and time-consuming for the British infantry, as some had to be blown in with demolition charges. Nevertheless, slowly but surely, the enemy resistance weakened, and by 2015, on the 6th of June 1944, the final German position had fallen to the Suffolks. 45 minutes later, at 2100, Strongpoint Hillman was declared to be in British hands, with an estimated 50 German prisoners of war having been taken. Thereafter, A Company consolidated its positions, while C Squadron was withdrawn to refit and reorganise. At the same time, B and D Companies were ordered forward to clear the flanks around Hillman, and by the end of D-Day, the 1st Battalion the Suffolk Regiment was firmly in position to the south of Colville, Sir Orne. Reflecting on the eight-hour-long struggle to secure Hillman, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Goodwin recalled an interesting encounter he had with his divisional commander, Major General Thomas Rennie. The divisional commander, Major General Tom Rennie, came up to my outpost before the second attack and asked how we were getting on. On being told the situation, he said, Well, you must get it, Hillman, before dark, and in time to allow you to dig in on your consolidated positions. Enemy armour is about, and they will probably counter-attack at first light. I assured him we should succeed. He then left with a cheery good luck. 